Communicators winds up its visit to CES International 2013, the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, with a look at several booths to see some of the technology that's being unveiled this year. And now joining us on the Communicators is Henry Massey of the Venom Corporation. Mr. Massey, Hello. what is it that Venom makes? Well, we actually are producing a product here called DataGuard. Uh, DataGuard is a security product for your mobile device. Now, the idea of um, DataGuard is it makes an encrypted network or encrypted link between your mobile device and the internet, which stops people grabbing your Wi-Fi connection and um, grabbing your data sent over the Wi-Fi connection. There's a really big danger with, um, with mobile devices when they're used on open Wi-Fi networks that people can read your passwords and your usernames on your email or see exactly what you're doing on the web. It's a big issue, really big issue these days. And more and more people are having their data stolen by the data being grabbed on open Wi-Fi networks. This product stops that. So we're looking at a little package here. What, where is the actual data card? Well, DataGuard is actually a combination between a server, enterprise-grade server, and we have servers in lots of different countries, and an app which you download onto your phone. And we have an app for both iOS and also for Android devices. You download the app, you enter the code which comes in this packaging, and away you go. Is this on the market now? It is on the market right now. We're also launching it through a number of stores across the, um, North America and in Europe. It also has one other huge advantage. You can use it to geo-relocate. Now what this means is if you, um, you're from the States and you go on a holiday and you want to watch Netflix or use all your US-based services, you can actually connect to a US server. And by doing that, you can access all your home-based things when you're on holiday. So I like to watch you know, um, TV from the UK. Not a problem. I use this product here. I can connect to a UK server. I can use all those things you can't normally access when you're out of the UK. Now, are there similar products made by other companies? Not ones that do what this does. There are so-called security products for mobile phones which are meant to stop viruses. But viruses aren't the issue on your mobile device. It's people grabbing the network connection and grabbing the data, looking at what you're doing. Would you go out and leave your car unlocked? And that's what you're doing. If you use your mobile phone on an open network, that's exactly what you're doing. Anyone armed with some software, there's software called Wireshark. Now, Wireshark is, is designed to allow anyone with it to see what other people are doing on their mobile devices. And with that, they can see your emails, they can see your passwords, and once they've got your password, then your email account is open forever. They can log in, they can see what you're doing, and lots of people use the same password for email and banking and online shopping. So once your password is out there, your entire online life is in danger. Now, Mr. Massey, if this has to go through a server, does it slow down operations on your mobile? Actually, it's meant to do the opposite. We compress the data at the server. So in actual fact, the data arrives at your phone or your device a little bit faster. So your experience should, if anything, be faster than using it without having it on. What does it cost? Um, $49.99, $49.99 per year. It's an annual license, or if you don't want it for so long, you can buy it for six months, three months, or one month. So 44, no monthly charges after that? $49.99, once you spend that, that's an entire year, use it as you wish. Henry Massey, where are you based? Uh, we're based in the UK, although Venom also have an office in Minneapolis as well. Where in the UK? Uh, near London, just outside of London. Where did you come up with the idea to develop this technology? Uh, we'd already made a system for, for computers, um, but the real issue isn't, of course, your home where you're using a computer with a network you trust. It's when you go out. When you go to your coffee shop, you're in Starbucks somewhere, and you want to use an open Wi-Fi network, you don't know what the guy sitting next to you is doing. What's he doing on his mobile phone? Is he looking at your data? And uh, these days, people are using mobile devices, your iPads, your tablets to access the data, not so much laptops. So we had to develop something to work on tablets and mobile phones. No one else has done that. Getting a connection, uh, an encrypted connection to work on a mobile device is tough. It's taken us over a year to develop this product. Different uh, license fee for every device? Um, you buy the license. Once you've got a license, you can use it. Um, you can install the um, app on as many devices as you want, but you can only actually have it online on any one device at any one time. Henry Massey of Venom. This is The Communicators at CES International 2013.
Well, one of the exhibitors here at CES International 2013 in Las Vegas is a company called HealthSpot. Steve Cashman is the CEO and founder of HealthSpot. Mr. Cashman, what is it that your company makes? Well, we make what we call a health spot station. And what the health spot station is about is delivering the highest quality, lowest cost healthcare appointment in America. And our vision is to create access to healthcare and consumer pharmacies all across the country and empower the health systems and doctors to see you there where it's convenient for you as a consumer and let you have a brilliant experience with healthcare, which is unlike what you probably have today. And how do you use technology to do that? Well, we, we've encompassed a lot of technology, so that's why the Consumer Electronics Show is pretty interesting to us. So you're going to see a myriad of touch screens, medical devices, software connectivity, all combined in a package that's kind of wrapped up a little bit Apple-like to just hide the technology and focus on getting you healthy and having a great experience. So about everything that you see walking through the show, there's a little bit of in HealthSpot. Now, Steve Cashman, you uh, this won an award here at the show, correct? We did. We won. We're very happy to have won the Popular Science uh, CES 2013 Future Product of the Year. So, very, it's an honor. And uh, you know, we've worked very hard to understand consumers and their needs in healthcare and the financial models and identify how we could fix those problems. So it's uh, it's nice to have it all come together. Steve Cashman, walk us through what happens. Let's go on up and Absolutely. see. Absolutely. So, so imagine this, you've woke up, you don't feel very well. You got a fairly good idea what you have. We've all been there, right? And it's like, how am I to get into my doctor, get to work, get my prescription all picked up? So with us, you got a couple options to deal with that. You can go on your iPhone right away, load up, look for the closest health spot, quickly pick a doc, type in what your conditions are, and we've already got your insurance card and everything stored in the cloud. So all that normal sitting in the waiting room and everything you do is gone. So now that you've found a health spot and maybe a, a convenient consumer pharmacy by your home, you're gonna walk in, you're gonna walk up to our health spot station. So as soon as you come in, you're gonna go right in there and you're gonna find, hey, I'm a returning patient. I can come up to this, go through my normal disclosures, and right away we're gonna be able to identify you by your phone number and other things. So once that do is done and we know you're here, there's a medical attendant that's gonna greet you and help bring you into the unit. So I'm gonna let Lisa take over here and do a demo real quick for you. So here's a list of symptoms. So I'm gonna check in with a fever today. Okay, but any, any symptom here that the patient experiences, I'm gonna check in here. And it'll go ahead and ask me if any of my information has changed. I'll hit no. Uh, and then any of my uh, health conditions, any issues that I have, uh, allergic to aspirin, so go ahead and hear, no, nothing's changed. And then my insurance information, so we'll go ahead and hit nothing's changed there. Then over here, a medical attendant will always be present with the unit. And uh, they will go ahead and take my copay. All right. All right, and then, let's see here, we'll do this here. Okay, it, the system has gone out in the software and found all the available appointments, and it looks here that there's appointment here for, for noon. So I'm gonna go ahead and check in. All right, we'll go ahead and finish. And then the last part is the medical attendant will verify that I am who I say I am with my license and ID. Okay, so it'll go ahead and pull that up and verify and, and show my license and uh, verify the am who is ICM, and then we'll go ahead and walk into the station here. So a medical attendant will be here at all times to uh, initiate uh, the vital process. And uh, we'll go ahead and do that here. So the vital process is height, weight, and blood pressure, temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and enter my height. So I am 5'8 here. All right, and my weight, I'm gonna ask to, I'm gonna step on a scale here, so uh, go ahead and move around. Go ahead and step on the scale. And it's gonna capture my weight here. All right. Okay, and then uh, we're gonna take my temperature as the last part of the vital process. So this is a thermometer. I'm going to stick it in my ear, and I'm going to select take temperature. Here is our video conference uh, initialized. So here is my data again that both he sees and I see as we have our visit. So, good morning.
Hello, welcome to the Health Spot Station. Thank you. I've checked in with a fever today. Okay, well, since you have a fever, we could go ahead and initialize the digital otoscope. This is a digital camera used to look at the patient's ear, nose, and throat. So hopefully we can use this to help you uh, get better. That looks pretty good. So now with this video feed, I actually have the ability then to capture a snapshot of that and then store that to your patient record. So then at a later date, we could review it if you need to uh, monitor the progress or hopefully get you better. Is that your eardrum? That is my eardrum. And so imagine how great this is. You get to see if your eardrum is actually infected or, or if there's something wrong. And then physician can talk to that and say, here is where it, and we've never been able to do that before. So it's so exciting. So exciting. Right. Um, so the next device we have in the health spot station is a dermoscope. And now this is another digital camera generally used to look at skin conditions. Additionally, our physicians are using it to look at the eyes as well as the throat. So this is useful in the treatment of conditions such as pink eye. Looks really good. And also um, for skin conditions here. Uh, yeah. All right, great. So the, the next device we have for you is the stethoscope. And now this is a digital stethoscope that actually transmits the patient's heart and or breath sounds real time to the provider. Turn this on. Okay, place this on my chat. And through Bluetooth technology, uh, this device is connected to a PC through the cloud, and uh, he's actually able to hear my heartbeat in Columbus, Ohio, through this device. Lisa Mon, who would buy this product? So, uh, buy this product. So, any everyday retail location that uh, would like to put this to have a value add of uh, allowing consumers to be able to uh, be treated by their doctor. So, I would say a pharmacy would be the ideal pharmacy, grocery store, or employer site. But a pharmacy, imagine this I have a four year old. I would uh, take him to the doctor, get treated, have a physician diagnose his ear infection. Then he, we would walk out the door, he would e prescribe a prescription to that pharmacy, we'd pick it up and be done. I mean, you think of urgent care visits and, um, and going to the doctor today and the time and, and it's just not convenient. So this is a convenient way to get access to healthcare. So Steve Cashman, where'd you come up with the idea for HealthSpot? What's your background? Well, I'm a tech startup guy, so I mean, I've got it in my blood, you know, just uh, fixing problems using technology. So where I came up with the idea is my wife and four kids, and we're always dealing with one of the kids with something, right? And you're running to an urgent care or a minute clinic because you can't get in to see the doctor. And when I've went through that process, I've just been amazed to think about all of the overhead you have sitting in a CVS, for example, or a Walgreens with doctors sitting there waiting for you to walk in or an urgent care. And then I've also, you know, how do you be, when you look at healthcare and the precedence it has on TV today and the Affordable Care Act and the 30 million people coming in, and you look at the shortage of the doctors that are out there, we gotta find innovative ways to solve that problem. So I looked at it from a problem solution. I think we've all lived with that challenge and my four kids and my wife it was right there and you know, I, I was blessed with being a technology entrepreneur. So I immediately went to work to say, how could we solve this problem? And we started with focus groups, working with consumers. And when you get a room full of consumers and ask them, what do you think of healthcare? When you have, you wake up, you're sick, you're trying to get to your doctor. You don't get, it's great, it's clean, the doctor's so friendly, it's, you know, all these items. Um, you get a lot of frustration. So we started looking at shaving away the layers of that onion to figure out how we could solve that problem. And here's what we came up with. And we just kept iterating it with consumers over the last two years till we had it there. And really we looked at how do we build a tool for doctors to evolve their practices. What would this cost? It's going to cost exactly what, equal to or less than your healthcare appointment in America today. So we place these units. What HealthSpot is doing is building a healthcare access network across the nation. We're going to put thousands of these blue pods all across the country, and we're going to partner with all the top doctors and top health systems to create access to care for you. And the, the consumer is going to pay what they pay for a health 
appointment today or possibly the last based upon, you know, where it's at and who the doctor is. Well, what is the pod cost? What would it cost a pharmacy or whoever to buy this? Well, we don't sell the unit because I want a consistent experience. Whether you're in Las Vegas today or maybe you're back home in Columbus, Ohio like me, I want a health spot appointment to be brilliant every time you have a health spot appointment. So we don't sell the pod. That's not our model. We place it out there and create this network. For a retailer, what we're doing is they're going to pay us about $1,000 a month as a managed service fee to have this in their store, all the software, everything that goes with it, and we support and maintain it all for that. So very small, eight by five footprint, 40 square foot, and you can provide the best healthcare in the world to all your customers. Steve Cashman, was there a regulatory process for the, the health spot? Well, there actually is. And at, today you have two real big challenges with healthcare. One, every doctor's licensed in their state. So if you wanted to see if, say you're from Washington, D.C., like you're Peter, and you're out here in Vegas and you were sick today, you couldn't just wander in to Walmart and see a health spot and your doctor back home. He'd have to be licensed here. Now, Senator Udall and Thompson have both put together bills that would create a 50-state telemedicine license. Um, that was just proposed in the last week. The other challenge is reimbursement. The health insurance companies have questioned, um, not necessarily HealthSpot, but some of the industry, do we lower the bar too far to create more access? And obviously there's a real balance there with the shortages and stuff so we have and the quality measures. So mandatory reimbursement across the 50 states is not there. So about 17 states have mandated both licenses and reimbursement, but not a 50 state wide deal today. So those are some of the regulatory issues, but they're being attacked pretty aggressively by some of our folks in government today. Well, there's a corporation in Rochester, New York called Vuzix that has developed some award-winning technology. Adam Travers with Vuzix. What is this technology? What are we looking at? This is called the M100. And what it is, is it's uh, basically an accessory for your cellular phone or smartphone. What it does enhances your smartphone experience. So, right. it has its, uh, an onboard processor, so you can run apps on there by itself, and it runs through Android. However, when it really, uh, the real power there is the synergy between the device and your smartphone. So you could do something like this, for instance. Controlling your smartphone through this, and you would see this on the top screen up this here. This is just a regular app. Right, correct? this is just a regular app. Great. So you could download it from our website, Vuzix.com, and uh, there's other things you could do with it. It has a built-in camera on front here, so you can do augmented reality applications, sort of overlay things upon the real world, um, and you know, basically what we call information snacking is sort of our tagline there. Um, other things, just uh, sort of a hands-free device to uh, get phone calls, up pops, you know, whoever's calling you, their phone number, either take the call, don't. So if somebody wears this and you, you basically put it like this with a, with a headset. Right, right, right. Right? And so it's over your eye like this. And what is one seeing when one is looking through there right now? Uh, right now I'm seeing a video. Okay. Um, you might see a desktop or all your, all your app selections, things like that. Right. Um, you can interact with, with voice commands to run apps, or there's a couple buttons up here you could toggle with, or use your phone. And it's basically whatever video we send to it that you're going to see up there. And we're going to try to look through the camera and see if we can see that uh, three, is it 3D video? Uh, no, not 3D, this is 2D. Okay. All right. So what's the purpose of something like this? Again, the information snacking thing is uh, really important here. Let's say, you know, you want to look up a stock price real quick. You don't got to reach into your phone, you know, drag things around to look it up. Just a voice command, single voice command, show me this stock, and up it pops. Um, say you need a direction somewhere. Up pops arrows telling you where to go. Maybe you know you want to go to your favorite restaurant, but you don't know where it is or something like that. Arrows can kind of like direct you and overlay like on a map up on the top device. Is this product, what do you call it? It's called the M100 Smart Glass. And what does the M stand for? Uh, the M. I do not know what the M stands for. Okay. Um, is this on the market? Not yet. How long was it in development? Uh, the company's been around for many years, so this is kind of an evolution of our products. And we have several other products, like uh, instead of a monocular, binocular glasses, things like that. But this particular one, um, maybe a couple years in development. And where is it manufactured, Mr. Trevor? Rochester, New York. 
Vuzix is the corporation. We've been talking with Adam Travers. Here is the technology, and I called it award-winning in the beginning. What awards has it won, or what award did uh, it win? Actually, I could show you over here. Technology will be integrated into this, or on this side there's some sunglasses. Design, design and Engineering Award, um, best innovation for wireless handheld or handset accessories. Augmented reality. The Communicators is on location at CES International in Las Vegas. Well, one of the most talked about and looked at items here at CES International 2013 is made by a company called MakerBot and Bree Pettis is the CEO of MakerBot. Mr. Pettis, what are we looking at here? So you're looking at the next industrial revolution. We're, and we're, MakerBot is, a, is an innovation company and we empower people to innovate so they can change the future. That said, what are we looking at as far as the equipment? So what we've got here at CES this year, and this is our fourth year at CES, is the next generation of MakerBot 3D printers. We've got the MakerBot Replicator 2, which is a desktop 3D printer optimized to use the material PLA, which is a renewable bioplastic. And then we've also got the MakerBot Replicator 2X, which is an experimental 3D printer optimized to use the more challenging ABS material. Uh, these two tools empower people to make things. And it works by building up layers of plastic until your model is done, and then you take it out of the MakerBot, and you have something. And this printer over here is actually working right now, correct? Right, so it just finished its 3D model, and it's cooling down. This is the MakerBot Replicator 2X, and it's a two-color 3D printer. It makes things in multiple colors, so you've got red and black there, and it's just a wonderful piece of machinery for anybody who's creative. Is printer a misnomer? You know, I think it's, it's actually a, a, it's a little confusing to people, but a 3D printer actually works very similarly to a 2D printer. With a 2D printer, you take a virtual document and you make it a physical document. With a 3D printer, you take a 3D model that's virtual on your screen and you make it a physical 3D model. And Engineers, industrial designers, architects, oh, they just get this. They've been using this type of, of technology for a long time on a mainframe size, and now they, they have access to it and they can just have it on their desktop. They can make prototypes, and if they don't like the way it looks, they don't have to show their boss. They can just throw it away and make another one. It allows innovators to iterate so they can make a model, and then they can make another one, and then they can make another one. And in the old days, this would take like a month to make a model. So you could iterate multiple times a year. With a MakerBot, you can iterate multiple times a day. And it's affordable, so you don't have to stress out about how much it costs. Well, we're looking at some more models. Are these uh, basically all doing the same thing? Are they the same model? So these are the, this is our bot farm, the MakerBot bot farm. This is a wall of MakerBot Replicator 2s, making things that we're, we're just, when it's done, we just give them away to people here at CES. And the idea, that one of, that's kind of one of the powers of a MakerBot, is when you make it, the material's so affordable, the machine is so affordable, that if somebody likes it, you can just give it to them. If a bunch of friends turn out they like your, the thing that you designed, maybe you should start a business, become an entrepreneur, put this thing out on the market. We've got a, um, We've got a guy who did just that. His name is Chris, and he has a company called Square Helper. And you can actually buy his MakerBot made product at squarehelper.com. It's a little thing that goes between the Square and your iPad. The Square is a little thing that allows people to swipe credit cards. And it fits into the headphone jack. And one of the problems is that it spins around and you can't use it backwards. So he made a little thing that goes between there. Very simple, but if he was going to go the traditional route, he would have had to spend six to $10,000 on molds and then go with injection molding, and then it would take him three to six months to go to market. With a MakerBot, when there's a new iPad, he can go ahead and change his design, and the next day he can be making his product for the next generation of iPad. This ability to be flexible, to be able to bring something to market really quickly, to be able to make the thing you need right now on your desktop 
is the power of the MakerBot. And it's this power, when you make things, you get this feeling of accomplishment. And the feeling you get is, is the feeling you get when you're, you're participating in the next industrial revolution. It, it's a feeling that, that, that you can make a difference in the world, that the things that you make you can have and you can share them with the world. Brie Pettis, what does a MakerBot cost? A MakerBot costs $2,199 to get into it. And then the material is about $50 a kilogram. So super affordable. Get one, make things, change the world, participate in the next industrial revolution with us. It's going to be a blast. The world is changing and we're going to just, and we're going to change it. Where are they made? So we make MakerBots in Brooklyn. We're in Brooklyn, New York. And all MakerBots are assembled with MakerBot pride. Everyone that, Everyone that goes together has the Brooklyn spirit in it, of, of that can-do attitude of making things, things that you love, things that, the, the just, MakerBot is just such a special machine and it, re, and it requires people making it that care about it. Brie Pettis, this, what is this material over here? This, these, this is uh, MakerBot plastic and we have two kinds of material. We have MakerBot PLA, which we now manufacture, and we have MakerBot ABS. So the MakerBot PLA is for the MakerBot Replicator 2, and the, and the MakerBot ABS is for the Replicator 2X. And it's about the thickness of spaghetti, or? Yeah, we, we joke that it's noodles. And uh, you know, you, this is the material that you feed into the machine to make anything you want. And what is in your hand? You've been holding so this in your hand. This is a V6 Ford engine block. And Ford sent this to us, and you can actually download this on our website, Thingiverse. And it's the real model for an actual six-cylinder engine that I scaled down and made on my MakerBot with MakerBot PLA on a replicator too. And you know what's so cool? I'm a total gearhead, so this is, I love this model. I just love engines. But I never knew, you know, I've never, I've taken engines apart and put them back together again, but I've never seen the in, inside of an engine because I'd have to like saw it in half and it's made out of like, you know, it's made out of like iron, right? But now that by making it on my MakerBot, I got to see all the different places where all the, uh, all the coolant goes and how they keep that separate from the oil. Uh, getting a MakerBot is also an education in how things are made in the manufacturing process and in the world around us. Are you the inventor? You can blame me. <laughs> where did you come up with the idea? You know, 3D printers have been around for about 25 years, but they were mainframe size machines that were really expensive. Uh, I wanted one, but I couldn't afford one. So, I, so some friends and I got together and we started tinkering. And when it worked, we quit our jobs and started MakerBot so, we could get ev so everybody could have one of these. Bree Pettis is the founder of MakerBot and the CEO of the MakerBot Corporation out of Brooklyn, New York, one of the hottest products here on the floor of CES.